Restore your health, be renewed. You gotta take control to see a breakthrough. You're only one step away from a life made better. A life made better. A life made better. Happy Friday, guys. Hello, and welcome to the Restore Your Health podcast. I'm your host, LaRonda, and we're so excited that you're here today and listening in weekly. You guys are dedicated listeners. That's what we like to hear. So welcome to the show, guys. In this podcast, we will discuss knowing the signs of a heart attack. Um, We'll discuss the COVID-19 updates. Young Living's Essential Oil Health Supplement Alkaline and the Medicinal Properties of the Herb Guaco. So let me start out by telling you, first of all, I'm not a physician, nor do I claim to be a healer. All the content shared on the show are completely for informational purposes only, to provide knowledge, natural homeopath therapies for those seeking alternative ways to traditional medicinal systems. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. So today we'll talk in detail um, about knowing the signs of a heart attack, okay, and what preventive measures to take. Many people experience the signs of an early heart attack unknowingly. They're dismissed as feeling tired or overwhelmed. Um, Today, we'll reveal the early signs of a heart attack and what to do if those symptoms occur. Heart attacks are often one of the leading causes of death in America, and it's been often called the silent killer because the signs are often dismissed as minor cold-like symptoms. Recently, in a Harvard Health online article, it says that the cause of most heart attacks is due to sudden blockage in a coronary artery is the formation of a blood clot thrombos. The blood clot typically forms inside the coronary artery that already has been narrowed by atherosclerosis, a condition in which fatty deposits plaque built up along the inside walls of the blood vessels. So that's why it's really important, guys, for you to stay hydrated, you know, drink lots of water and to consume the right types of oils. Stay away from the vegetable oils. Um, Try to um, consume oils like your olive oils, um, sesame seed oil, your grapeseed oil, um, almond oil, you know, some of the better oils, coconut oil is one I love as well. So you want to consume the healthier oils and stay away from uh, the traditional vegetable oils, okay, because those they build up plaque on the inside of your blood vessels and can cause a blockage on down the line later on. All right, so just want to make sure I put that in. A heart attack occurs when one's heart coronary arteries are blocked suddenly or extremely slow blood flow to the heart. A heart attack, also known as myocardial infarction. However, diet, exercise, and other lifestyle factors are known to be a risk in heart disease. The major risk um, factors for heart disease, as well as the condition itself, are closely linked to the risk developing atrial fibrillation. Some may ask the question, can a healthy heart lifestyle prevent atrial fibrillation? Can it reduce symptoms? Well, let's see. Let's find out. Okay. Well, a group of Harvard doctors revealed in an article recently that everything that you need to know about atrial fibrillation, from why you should be screened, for atrial fibrillation to preventative measures, managing ways to prevent AFib, um, also um, giving you a little bit of knowledge uh, that's needed to, for you to stay active. Also giving a little bit of knowledge that's needed to be an active partner in your own health. First and foremost, each year you should be getting a physical. So if you're not getting a physical every year, at least get one every two years. Okay, I think it's recommended to get one every two years. Um, So when you do get your yearly physical, you want to ask your physician to do an echocardiogram. And you need an echocardiogram even if you have no symptoms 
Um, and if your EKG comes out normal, because the echocardiogram will see what the EKG cannot. So that's why it's important to ask for um, the echocardiogram. Okay. And this will give you a good picture of your heart's rhythm. That's what the echocardiogram does. It, it looks at the heart rhythm of the heart, it goes a little bit in detail of your heart's condition and your heart health. Okay. And it shows you if anything is of concern. So you're going to take these steps to live a healthier and active lifestyle in addition to other standards, AFib treatments, such as if you're a smoker, stop smoking. Okay, quit smoking. You want to control your high blood pressure. If you are one who, you know, you have a high schedule, a lot of stress, you want to try to um, diminish the amount of stress you have in a day because all these factors can lead to high blood pressure. Um, stay away from the salty foods, guys. That's another thing um, that can cause uh, your blood pressure to raise. Um, and then you want to get treatment for sleep apnea. If some of you suffer from um, sleep apnea, if you're not getting enough uh, rest at night because of sleep apnea, you want to go ahead and ask your doctor for treatment for that. They have sleeping machines that um, can help you. They even do sleep study tests to see, you know, what type of treatment can um, be used for that. So you want to also, you know, look at those measures as well. And maintaining a healthy weight is important. Um, exercise will help you do that and the right diet. Okay. If you drink alcohol, you want to um, lower your consumption of alcohol um, or stop drinking alcohol altogether. Um, you're going to keep your cholesterol and triglycerides within a healthy range. Um, and like I said before, you're going to get regular exercise. So taking a, a nice walk um, in your neighborhood um, for your for the older um, for your older, you know, people out there, the elderly, you know, walking back and forth from the mailbox to your home. You can take a couple of walks up and down your driveway um, if you don't want to get out and walk your neighborhood or get out and walk in the park. You can walk in your own in your own yard doing light yard work, whatever type of exercise um, that meets your fancy. <laughs> okay. Whatever type of exercise that you, you decide to do. All right. And then you're going to get recommended vaccines. So getting the flu shot, pneumonia, um, you know, your regular seasonal vaccines, you want to make sure that you're getting those on a regular basis. That's um, if you're not allergic to the flu shot, of course, um, you want to get that. Um, and these are all factors that help you to keep your heart healthy and to ward against heart disease. You want to maintain proper anticoagulation. In most cases, people can control a healthy heart rhythm um, with proper anticoagulation. You can still minimize your risk um, of stroke. The most dangerous complications of, the, of this is abnormal heart rhythm. Seeking more holistic ways to prevent AFib is going to be very, very, very beneficial for you. Okay, um, especially if you um, are one, like I said, you're already up in the age or especially for those who are getting older, you know, we're, we're getting a little bit older. And as you get older, you need to look at different factors, okay, because your body is changing constantly and so should your health goals, your health goals to change according to as your body is changing. It's important to stay abreast on alternative homeopathways. Uh, to health, which brings me to our next topic, guys, which is the guaco herb, and it's very good for heart health. Okay, let's talk about the health benefits of guaco herb. Let us first define guaco. Well, guaco is also known as guaco. Um, it's a common name for a few vines. That's right. So it's vines. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> classified as Macania guaco which are found in the rainforest regions of South America. Other names are snake herb, uh, heart of Jesus, sipo catingo, guaco liso, and guaco de Recio, and guaco de ciro. Guaco originally from the South American region, Jamaica. 
also known as Macania glamorata. Okay, so what what is guaco? Guaco, it it really it looks like a bunch of vines, guys. Yes. <laughs> So if you saw it, you'd probably think, oh, that's nothing but a bunch of vines, but we're wrong. The vines can grow six and one half feet, two meters tall and up to eight feet. So that's, they, they can get pretty tall there. All right. And probably are being dismissed as vines, but the heart shaped leaves contain cinnamic acid. And smells like pumpkin spice. So it has like a, a sweet little smell to it. All right. When the when the flowers and the vines are crushed, it smells like um it smells like vanilla. That's what it smells like. Yeah, like it has like a really, really sweet kind of smell to it. So when you crush it, you'll know that okay, this is not just vines. It must be something else because it has a that really sweet smell. Um, to it once it's crushed. Guaco has anti-inflammatory, anti-allergic, and bronchodilator properties. Guaco herb is also used in traditional medical, medical systems for upper respiratory illnesses such as colds, flu, bronchitis, asthma, the effectiveness of guaco containing remedies for arthritis and rheumatism. Wow, so that's a lot, guys. That guaco is something else. The plant also contains bronchodilators, which are natural chemicals which dilate the bronchial passages in the lungs and are used to treat bronchitis and asthma um, and other respiratory conditions. This is common and, and as an antibacterial for candida and yeast infections. Guaco contains coumarin, which is also found in blood thinning uh, medicines. It has blood thinning properties. Guaco has been used for centuries in the rainforest natives as a treatment for snake or insect bites. The leaves are boiled into a tea uh, to be taken orally and are ground into a paste to treat the external site of the wound. So they use it, um, it was used for snake bites and insect bites um, in the rainforest natives. Wow, that's interesting. The leaves may also be boiled into a syrup and added with honey or agave to sweeten the taste while, um, for a cough syrup. So it's used also as a cough syrup for upper respiratory um, illnesses or infections. Guaco also um, has been taken to cure ulcers, to reduce fevers, and as an anti-inflammatory. While the herbs not commonly used in the US or Europe, the remedies from the plant are frequently prescribed in South America, where it's widely available over the counter in herbal products in South America. Though many people make their own cough syrups by boiling the leaves and straining the water and adding a little bit of agave or honey, the potential use of a homeopathic medicinal plant such as a guago has become a focus on the National Health Ministry of Brazil. Wow, it's a ministry, guys. Yeah, <laughs> natural homeopath medicinal plants are a ministry in Brazil. And it should be, yeah. Their goal is to determine which homeopath remedies have scientific validity and to promote these cheaper products throughout the world healthcare community. So they are working hard to make sure that that the people are up and abreast on their knowledge as far as homeopath uh, remedies, okay? And um, I think for one, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, being that we talk about a lot of homeopath uh, solutions on the show, um, it's, it's the ministry over there. Like it's people are really into natural medicine nowadays. They are looking at different alternatives to, um, to restore their health and to stay healthy and vibrant and to, to not get sick as much. You know, people are tired of getting sick. <laughs> Who wants to be sick, right? You can't do ministry effectively if you're sick. So one thing, um, you know, that we 
do on the show is we make sure that you guys stay informed about what herbs to take and you know what to do for your health and wellness. And so that's why it's important that we share this information with you guys on a weekly basis so that we all can do this together, okay? And it is a ministry. Yes, homeopath rem remedies to your health and wellness is a ministry, okay? So, you know, therefore, you know, we share this information with you guys because you never know who might be listening on the other side. You never know... Um, who may need a solution to their problem, okay? Somebody may be listening to the show and may be having the same type of symptoms that we're discussing at the moment. And hey, the light, the light bulb comes on and they're like, wow, yeah, I didn't know that I could use that to help this situation. Um, and they try it and it works. And hey, it's successful, right? And that makes it all worth it. It makes it all the more important for us to continue to share this information. Okay, so let's get back to the guaco herb and let's find out the herbal remedies of guaco. Uh, guaco is good to help reduce flu symptoms, cold symptoms, hoarseness, sore throat, throat infections, bronchitis, seasonal allergies, skin infections, um, and rheumatoidism, and also is good for your heart, for heart health. In the United States, guaco health products can be purchased in your health food store in your um, or, or on your online food supermarkets, okay? Or you can even find guaco in your um, your farmer's market. A lot of farmer's markets have a lot of herbs that you can't find in your regular superstore or your regular grocery store, um, but you can find them at your farmer's market. So um, I know the DeKalb Farmer's Market is a good one. Uh, the Forest Park Farmer's Market is another good one. So, you know, there, there are quite a few um, here I'm here in Georgia, so I don't know where you are listening up across um, the world, but you can find a good farmer's market in your area to go to and, and you know, try to find uh, the guaco herb because if this one is not, it's not um, sold everywhere, okay? And if you can find the actual herb, it will be a good thing to start growing some in your own garden, huh? That way you'll have your own guaco. How cool that would that be? But remember, it grows like a vine. So wherever you plant it, you know, it's going to get at least up to eight feet tall. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Okay. All right. So guaco can be sold without prescriptions at food supplements. Okay. It is illegal, however, for the container to take any health claims that recommends that its use is specific for illnesses or list any contradictions, all right? So it's very critical that consumers read and understand the properties of the supplements they take. You know, that's why I like to lead, read the, the back of, you know, your supplements before taking them. And it's also a good thing to get, to make sure that you guys are um, getting a natural supplement that has exactly what it says on the bottle. You know, like the Young Living brand products are, uh, we sell a host of herbal um, products that are really good and that are 100% plant-derived natural herbs. Whatever's on that bottle, what's on the outside of the label is inside the bottle, okay? So people who are already taking a prescription containing Coumadin um, may need to be aware that guaco is a blood thinning herb and it will cause your blood to thin. So you want to consult your physician before taking it. If you're taking an herb like guaco, um, I'm sorry, if you're taking um, Coumadin because guaco increases the dose of blood thinning agent. All right. And a circumstance that may have unfavorable consequences could occur. So just make sure that you um, consult your physician before uh, using guaco. 
All right, just had to say that as well. All right, so our next topic of discussion will be the Young Living Supplement Alkaline. Guys, let me tell you, the alkaline is awesome for your pH balance in your stomach. I started taking alkaline a few months ago. Actually, um, I was having some, I was having, you know, like a little upset stomach, your occasional upset stomach, you know. Um, but I started taking it um, because one, I was curious to see how it worked. So I bought um, the alkaline and I, I used, I tried to, you know, I, I tried it out and it worked very well and it works fast. Okay, it has like a little fizz to it, um, but it works really, really good. Alkaline helps to maintain optimal pH balance in your stomach um, with an alkaline blend of biochemical minerals, salt, cell salts. Um, it has the lemon powder with premium essential oils that also work together to soothe your stomach. All right. So um, today for, you know, there are far too many foods that are heavily loaded down with sugars and stimulants impeding the body's ability to foster a healthy pH balance. Well, with the alkaline, the alkaline will help to control that, to help by keeping a natural alkalinizing supplement. It's gentle on the stomach and it contains no sugar, all right, or artificial flavors, okay? The biochemical cell salts help to maintain your pH balance in your gut. And help your gut to be healthy. And who doesn't want a healthy gut, right? We all do because we know that health starts where? In your gut. That's right. Health starts in the gut. Remember that what you put inside is what you're going to get out. So start putting healthy things in your gut so you can get the benefits. All right. We're going to reap good health here. That's what we're all about. Reaping good health and restoring your health uh, back to what originally your body was meant to function and how God want, want your body to function, all right? How we were created from the very foundations of the earth. How was your body created to function? Definitely not how a lot of it's of, of about what we're experiencing nowadays, right? <laughs> the recommended dosage for alkaline is four to six level teaspoons to alkaline or distilled water. Or you can even use spring water as well. Just make sure it's a good water, okay? It can be taken one hour before a meal or at bedtime. It's been highly effective for those having symptoms of indigestion or gastric reflux. So if you suffer from gastric reflux or you have, um, you know, indigestion from eating spicy foods and things of that nature, um, then you might want to try the alkaline. It works really quick guys like I said I've taken it myself so I can attest to um, it that it works really really good it's very effective all right so um, if you want to purchase the alkaline you can get that off of my young living site at myyl.com forward slash LaRonda dash Dawson okay so let us move right along let's talk about the misinformation of coronavirus and the growing concerns of fraud vaccinations. On February the 9th, a San Francisco article declared that the coronavirus vaccines were a medical fraud. Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> that's, um, that's, 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 incredible. <laughs> and it was said that the injection didn't prevent the infections from occurring um, that they provide immunity or that it doesn't stop the coronavirus from spreading. The article claimed that the shots alter your genetic coding, turning you into a viral protein with no on and off switch. These seemingly disturbing assertions were disprovable despite them reaching nearly 400,000 people on Facebook, according to Crowd Tangle, in which the entire article was said to track back to an osteopathic physician, um, Dr. Joseph Mercola, located in Cape Coral, Florida. Um, since then, the proclamation arise, has had a rise in national concern. Um, of the novel coronavirus disease, and rightfully so. 
that, um, you know, since this article came out with the doctor um, saying that that the vaccination were a big fraud, then it is brought in more concern with some people, okay? Um, especially for those who've already gotten the shot or have gotten a series of shots. Um, it's been said that it's a fraud. Um, the CDC, however, has just released an article on Tuesday of this week on the Delta variant and COVID-19 cases. And due to the high transmissibility of the virus and the rising cases of COVID-19, CDC recommends continuing to wear your mask indoors when in areas of substantial or high transmission of COVID-19. This is also um, a good practice to do when you're amongst a big crowd of people, all right? Those vaccinated and non-vaccinated uh, to help reduce the spread of the coronavirus. Although COVID-19 vaccines are said to be safe and effective for those 12 and older, breakthrough um, con infections can still occur. So even though you've already had your shot, you've been fully vaccinated, you, um, you still need to wear a mask. I still see people out. Every day I see people out without wearing a mask. And you should still wear your mask, okay? Just because you've got vaccinated does not mean that you're exempt from getting the virus. You still need to take precautions, take the measures, um, follow instructions, wear your mask, people, please. I can't stress that enough. Wear your mask, all right? Um, and for those of you who cannot take the coronavirus shot at all, because of a compromised immune system, you definitely want to make sure that you wear your mask, okay? Make sure that you are doubling up on your mask. Make sure you're washing your hands. Um, make sure that you are being aware of your surroundings and those that are around you. Um, people, make sure that you're keeping your, your distance um, so many feet, I think it's six feet away apart from the next person. When you're in line in the grocery store, I think people can get kind of lapsed nowadays because it's been some time since the first declaration of the coronavirus and people have gotten a little lax. But please, guys, please still follow protocol, still wear your mask, okay, and stay aware of your surroundings because the virus mutates. Um, it causes a different form known as variants. The Delta is a variant. Um, of the coronavirus, so that the new Delta virus is a variant of the corona, of COVID-19, which spreads more easily than other variants um, that may lead to more cases. The CDC says that people should wear their masks and follow social distancing protocols. Also, school personnel, teachers, students must continue to wear their mask regardless of their vaccination status, all right? So for more information, please visit cdc.gov. For details on the herbs share on today's show, um, please visit Herbs A to Z um, to order this week's products for the alkaline. You can visit myyl.com forward slash LaRonda Dash Dawson. Also, don't forget, guys, you can still pre-order my new book, Live, Sleep, and Eat Well at LaRondaPublications.com. All right. So thank you guys again for joining us for the Restore Your Health podcast. And I want you guys to stay healthy. Um, I want you to stay vigilant. Um, I want you to follow the CDC protocols. Okay. I'm doing the same thing. I'm not telling you anything that I'm not doing myself, okay? Because that would be hypocritical, right? <laughs> and we don't do that. So whatever I'm telling you to do, I, I practice that as well. So I'm telling you to do it. I'm doing it as well. Wear my mask. Make sure I'm, you know, aware of my surroundings. Keeping your hands clean. Keeping your, um, keeping your, um, surfaces clean and make sure that you are following the protocols um, that's been asked of you to follow.
All right. All right, guys. So thank you once again for joining us. It was wonderful to share information with you on the broadcast. This concludes our broadcast for this week. And as always, until next time, have a great weekend and we'll see you here next week on the Restore Your Health podcast. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and share the link with a friend. Have a great day. Restore your health, be renewed. You gotta take control to see a breakthrough. You're only one step away from a life made better. A life made better. A life